Well, good morning. Good morning. We are we are here. We are live. It is Monday, and we told you for those of you who who watch the um, the YouTube um, mukbang. We did a mukbang on Saturday, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that we would be here at I don't know nine or so or so, and it is now nine or so, and we are here. Welcome um, to the um, and I've got not I've got spam notifications on my phone. But in any case, uh, it, hey Preston, so welcome. We appreciate you being here this morning. Good morning. And uh, Joe Hope, what? What? Joe, oh no, I don't want to do that. Uh, anyway, um, Joe Hope and Thomas Dwayne Smith, good to see you guys. I haven't, haven't talked to either of you in a long, long time. Joe, I hope you're well. Um, and I hope the kids are well, your son is well. Um, come by and see an old man every now and again. But in any case, uh, we are, we have a topic this morning which I thought was very interesting. Because uh, we got it because we were watching TV. <laughs> we were watching, what what show was that? It was actually was it, was Nate, that? Nate and Jeremiah. Nate and Jeremiah. Nate and Jeremiah are on HGTV and what they do is help people redecorate their homes and make them feel better. And well, they catch people that are in uh, remodeling disasters. They have tried to do it on their own. They hire <laughs> contractors and contractors rip them off or don't do a very good job at it. And they, they're they desperate and they need help. And they're stressed and usually they're living in one little room of their house and and the house is falling apart. Some of them don't have a floor in their home or they're washing their dishes in the bathroom. Or something. It's very bizarre. Interesting show. How people get themselves in that, you know, in those situations is kind of amazing, really. Um, but that's what they do. And they go in and they help them out. Because people buy homes thinking that they, they're going to, uh, we remodeled them or that this home the ones we were watching they were living in a home that was way too small for the family that they had and they had like 12 kids or something they had three kids or 12 <laughs> three three I, i'm sure three seems like 12 <laughs> and um and i think it was like a two bedroom or something like that and all the girls living in one room and they in one room and it it and they bought it because it's in a good neighborhood it's near the beach and blah 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 but they didn't think about that they had to live in the house their kitchen was really small the living room they said they couldn't use it and anyway the whole thing is that the mother the the husband and wife and they had three kids. The mother was, well, how do I want to say, belligering or well, she was. She was now obviously, uh, the she wife. was. She was. She was. She was stressed out uh, about this, and then she um, was downgrading. She was her belittling husband. her husband. Yes. Um, in front of their kids. And that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about. We understand that life happens and you can be stressed. And you're going to have arguments and fights and stuff. And we're not saying to not let your children know reality. But I, it really up, upset my spirit because she was downgrading this man and belittling him in front of the, his daughters. And that you should not do that. I mean, if you have to fight... You have to fight. I mean, sometimes you're gonna you're gonna need to discuss issues and things like that. But adults need to do these things in an adult adult environment. Yeah. Your kids should not be privy to Thanks, Bob. to to you talking down to your the husband shouldn't be belittling his wife in front of his daughters or sons. And the wife should not be belittling their kids, the the, the, the husband in front of the kids. Oh, and, and 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 it wasn't like it was a conversation about uh, about countertops, or it wasn't a conversation about flooring, mm -mm. Uh, where they had a you know where they had a disagreement about whether you, whether we really need a stainless steel refrigerator. It wasn't about a specific thing 
that anybody, oh, thanks, man, uh, that anybody could see that, okay, that that was a disagreement about. This was a, this was really a personal attack. She was just telling him that he had no sense of how things should be done. Every time I talk to you, you just sit there and you don't, you don't, um, uh, talk back you shut down and you don't let let you don't say anything or come up with any decisions and yeah well and after you know but after and after a while and we've talked about this before after after a certain amount of time what 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 will happen men will shut down after a while mm -hmm. um because what they don't because because obviously what this guy doesn't want to do is that he doesn't want to get in a knockdown drag out shouting match um, with his wife, especially in that situation, in yeah, front, in front, of, in his front of his children, mm -hmm. that sends so many horrible messages to little girls, actually kids in general, but little girls in, in particular, in how they're going to deal with relationships with men in their lives, and 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 I and I don't, and I, don't I really don't think people understand that what how you treat your spouse in front of your kids is what they use as an example. Because they don't know, because they don't know when they're in their else. own relationships. Which is why we talk about all the time. People talk about all the time that kids who grew up in abusive households end up either being abused or abusers in their own households. Mm -hmm. uh, if if um, if the little girls have seen their mother get hit, um, and then they get hit, they think it's successful. They don't think it's as horrible as we do. Generally speaking, they don't. They don't think it's 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 horrible or out of line or unreasonable or terrible because they've seen it happen in their own home. Mm -hmm. And 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 by the same token, so you token, think that's natural? You think that's a normal thing? Um, and and when some and I I try to go back to think about. I know it's been a long time since I was a little girl, but. And um, I think about m my parents and how, you know, things went with them. Um, and they would argue in front of me. I'm going to be honest. that My parents were not perfect. Nobody's parents are. But you learn and you change hey, things. Freddie. And um, and they, they did. Occasionally, I would hear my mom say, well, let's not talk about this right now. You know, you, you could hear, you could hear not wanting to, to deal with anything and, and make me feel uncomfortable with it or whatever like that. But they would slip sometimes and you see things and different things like that. But hey, Brie. on a general, on, you know, make sure that you are protecting your children at all costs. Protect your children. Yeah, whatever. And their emotions. Yeah, whatever it is, it, it can wait. Whatever it is, it can wait. If you can't deal with it in a calm and um, reserved or restricted manner, then it can wait. If you're in if you're in full out angry mode, um, then you should probably not have that argument in front of your children. You should probably not have that discussion um, in front of your children because that's what they and I keep saying this. That's what they see as okay. Mm -hmm. Now you you might not see that. You might think, well, no, they don't. Well, yeah, they do, because kids kids will act more on what they see and how you act than what you say. That's just a re that's just the reality, and 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 science and research bears that bears that out. That again, kids who grew, grew up in abusive households will either become abusers or abused. It it it, it isn't it isn't hereditary in the sense that it's in their genes. It's hereditary in the sense that it's in their parents. They learn. And it's their, their examples. So if you want something different for your kids, then you have to model that behavior. You have to model it. You are on, parents, you are on full display in front of your children 24-7. Mm -hmm. All the time. They see they see everything you do. And, and just because they're really, really young, and you think they don't see stuff and hear things? They they do. And they feel a certain and they and they, and they feel a certain way about it too, because there's an energy. And it scares the crap out of little kids. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of kids, when when parents get a divorced and stuff, I hear kids say, "Well, it was my fault." 
you know, they, if I had been good, if I had been better, they wouldn't have, uh, because if they get in a fight about something with the kids or doing something like that, they feel like, well, it was my fault that they, they couldn't stay together. I, I did something wrong. So just, just protect your kids at all costs. Um, I, I know with my, with our son, sometimes, you know, you, we're talking about stuff and everything like that, even now when he's in passing and he'll, and then later on he'll come to me and he'll say, so what's up with blah, 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 blah. And, and why are you doing blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what do you, where did you hear that? <laughs> Here. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean. So you think that people don't hear they and that the kids are not paying attention that it's you know they're okay they're fine you, you know just kind of talk to them yeah that's the whole idea make sure that and debbie's right make sure that you're protecting them at all times because frankly it's your damn job um <laughs> and it's your job it's you chose to be a parent it's your job over your emotions it's, it's your job over your own hurts it's, it's your job over your own Whatever you got going on, it's your job. That's the deal. So, so pre hey, Kathy. So just make sure that you are protecting them the whole the, the whole time. Hey, De Rebecca DeBoers, it's good hearing from, good hearing from you. Um, haven't seen you in a while. But so please, 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 please. No matter what, no matter what, it's really, really hard. Sometimes I understand it's really hard because because this woman. I obviously had some things going on. Mm -hmm. um, she told the story about she had just lost her sister a little bit ago. To, yes. She was killed or something. So she had that going on. Um, so she had some stuff going and on. She was worried about how precious the time is for her daughters in being together and that they needed an environment that was um, cohesive to me making good memories is what she said. And I thought it was so funny that she was saying all of this. And she was creating some horrible memories. <laughs> yes. She was creating some hellish nightmare memories for her children. <laughs> and she's standing there yelling at it. And, and sometimes when you look at men, and, and no disrespect to men, but sometimes you can look at them and tell that they, like he said, they checked out. And he looked like that. He looked like he was just beat down. Yeah, and anyway. was not leading his household. She was in control. I'm sorry. You're right. You know, and... Yeah, the house is a mess. It's my fault. And, and I'm not saying that men have to be, you know, always right and aging. You don't speak your mind. You speak your mind. But there's a time and place. And a manner. And a manner to do it in. Yeah, and, and, and this was truly... Somebody who was, and you know, and I, I, I'm, I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt that, that that was stressed out and had a lot of issues going on, but this was not the way I to think, deal with it. to deal with it, and especially in front of your children, um, because all the, and, 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 and and Debbie says, you know, it, it, right? It's, it's it's sort of ironic that she was worried about creating these memories for her family because she wanted a new kitchen, but her relationship with her husband was going to be in the crapper, and that was the memory they were going to get. Yeah, you think you're giving them this, and they're really getting the other thing, mm -hmm. and because they are watching, they are watching you. Like I said before, they're not listening to what you tell them; they're watching what you do. And your kids can grow up in a one-room house and still and be, be fine, happy, and have and and, and have memories. It sort of reminds me of people buying cat toys and then the cat plays with the damn box. You thought you were doing this great thing, you had this really cool cat toy, and the cat's over there bouncing the box around. They so, playing with a or the top off of a water bottle. You think that you're giving them this, but they've already got what they need. You know? They've already got what they need. Mm -hmm. And what they need is you. They need as that there, more than a kitchen with white cabinets that looks out onto the living room. That makes the house cohesive. And apparently, this, this little house was all boxy and, 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 not, and not a great house. But that wasn't, and the thing is, when we talk about this, that wasn't going to solve what was wrong. 
there. there was something else going on in in that relationship because he was spending time he was there at the table with the kids you know it looks like they were doing homework or something like that and he was you know working and she was just standing up in the kitchen door just rawr, 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 rawr. <laughs> I'm thinking wow that poor man because I can't see you when I'm cooking I can't see you <laughs> he's like uh chill out we're trying to do we're trying to do our homework here <laughs> we're trying we're trying to create some memories with my kids here yes. that they're going to remember in a positive way so again it just brought up the subject about how you deal with your adult relationship manners uh, matters in front of your children and how and, 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 it's, and it's a lot it's a, it's really a lot, a lot about how um, tone and verbiage, all of that stuff, and, and adults have to be in control of all of that stuff. You have to be—you have to be in complete control over what comes out your face. And I know that's hard. It's hard, and that's harder for especially some. when you're angry and you're frustrated about something that has been going on for a long time, and you just want it resolved, and you want it to be to, to be in your mind perfect and right. And it can be very frustrating, and you you don't and, and the person that you beating up, you know, they need some support too. They're living it too. I'm sure he's thinking, I I feel the same way, but we've done what we can't. You know, we, he had done what he thought he we were, could do, and we were at the end of what I could do. And and I, and I tell you, and, and guys, and are like this. I'm gonna tell you. Yes, if you thought that you could do it and you find out that you can't, you've already failed. And you, and the failure is obvious. And a constant reminder of that failure will result in what we saw on, in the television program. A beat down man. And, 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 and that's the last thing she needs is a beat down man. Yeah, and, f and what we've heard before, you know, at the the dirty version of that, he was whipped. Well, well, yeah, and it, it, it even and, and it's worse than 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 yes, dear, yes, dear. It's it's worse than that because what you've done is that you have hey Jess, uh, what you what you've done is that you made I know this my, my chair and I, and I hope you can't hear it is squeaking, it's squeaking like a bad hip. Um, what you've done is that you have belittled him to a point where he has. Pushed him. He's actually in his brain. He's pulling himself out of the relationship because if he, because if guys continue to fail at something, they have a tendency to say, you know what? Apparently, I can't do this. And then we transfer to other things. I can't. I couldn't fix the house. I can't make her happy. Um, so maybe they don't try as hard, or maybe they stop trying. But emotionally, they pull, withdraw. They withdraw. And if they and if they keep withdrawing, at some point they they will re withdraw right out of the house into their car and down the road. That's the, and, uh, and that's the memory those things. those that's the memory those kids will have to deal with. Mm -hmm. So their family breaking up because a lot of times uh, people that go through uh, re remodeling and repairing <laughs> their homes they end up. Look at what happened to Bruce Jenner. Uh -huh. Stop, Bob. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> he withdrew right out of his gender <laughs> into a dress. <laughs> Stop. Oh, that's my friend. Bob. But that, but I mean, you you're really right, Bob. Because it, the, any the of those men that got hooked up with that with bad that things happen. They, they get they, they start taking drugs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Start wearing a dress. Crazy, crazy stuff. We won't talk about that though. But that is funny. Uh, <laughs> so it's so again, if you are involved, if you have to get involved in, in you know what in discussions um, that may be heated, really look around, see what little ears and eyes where they are, and then you may have you might have to as an adult because I'm sorry you're a grown up you may have to decide to have this discussion later in private. Um, and not in front of your kids. They're going to pick up all that 
negativity. They're going to pick up all that stuff. And it frightens, you know what, it frightens kids when their parents argue and, and, or, or somebody behaves in that manner. It frightens them. It's very scary. And, it's, and, it's, and, it, and it, frankly, it frightens them for no reason. You didn't have to. Because half the time, people don't really mean, it isn't that they don't mean what they say, they don't mean it in the way that they're saying it. They don't mean it with the venom that, that they're comes saying. comes out, and and I am I am a guilty person of that. I I um I was I used to be that way earlier, and you have to be careful of what because you can't take back words once it's out there. Once you say it, and it goes into their heart and their their mind their brain, it's already there, and it takes a lot to repair. And it takes time. Um, and then the person's got to be willing, too, at the same time, to, to accept that. Um, and, that's, and, it's, and, and it's tough for people. And it's tough. It isn't like, you, I mean, it isn't like it's easy. It isn't like you can just take it back. Well, I take it back. I didn't mean it that way. I'm sorry. And sort of throw it off that way. Well, I said I was sorry. Uh, no. And we yes, learned, you are sorry. We learned, a long, <laughs> we, we learned a long time ago that that is really... Not the way to apologize. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean a thing. It doesn't mean anything. And especially if fifteen minutes and in fifteen minutes you're doing exactly the same thing, exactly the same way. Um, and and really, it's just in a relationship period. I you know we we're, we're talking about this because we saw somebody do that in front of their kids. But even if you don't have kids, just be cautious of how you speak to your spouse. You know. Everybody has different ways of the way they think and feel. The way we were raised and 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 um, in our environment and the, the social life that we had growing up has a lot to do with how we take and receive what people say to us. Mm -hmm. And you know what if something the way you speak to them may be normal to you and you think oh it's nothing, but it. It's daggers in that other person's heart. Yeah, guys, you know what? How you, you, you know, when you were, you know, when you when you're in your twenty somethings, and how you spoke to your friends, your group of friends, uh, and how you maybe jousted and joked, um, and you said cutting things because that's kind of how you talk. You're talking in gruff and rough terms. You can't transfer that to your to your spouse and your, and, and that relationship necessarily uh, because. She may not receive it the same way, and it could be really damaging. And you and, and you walk around like a caveman, thinking that what did I say? What did I say? I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't, you know, I didn't say anything. Um, so we have to be super conscious of that, and hopefully somebody will see this, and they're either going through it or about to go through it, and take you a pause. Check yourself. Just take it. Just yourself. take a pause. Just how am I going? Do I really want to say this right now? Or how? Or how am I going to say this in a way that I get over? I get across what I'm saying. You know what I mean, without destroying the other person. And guys, we have the ability to destroy our spouses with our mouth, to crush their confidence. And and women have the very same power, actually. And I, and I don't think we, I, don't, I don't think that we talk about that nearly enough. Um, they have the power to crush a guy's confidence, crush it, um, because we do carry our. You know what? I carry my ego uh, around, and, and 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 a male ego, frankly, and I say this all the time, is this fine crystal. And yeah, sometimes they have to be protected. Sometimes I, I don't take it outside. I just leave it under the bed, where it's safe, um, because it's easy for someone who would walk around with a ball peen hammer and crush it into bits. And we see this with men all the time. Yeah. We see this with young boys all the time, having their confidence crushed, not by not by a bully, who you know what, who pushes them around or takes their lunch money. It could be by their their parents. It could be by their siblings. It could be by a teacher that um, that says something. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we have to be super careful. Um, and, and especially in, in, in our spousal relationships, that we don't crush our spouse's confidence out of our own frustration. I know that's a lot to unpack. I understand that, and that takes a while. And you've and 
Good God, you have to practice it for sure. You have to think about it. It's got to be first, foremost on your mind when you're having a discussion of any merit or any importance with your spouse. How can I say this and encourage her and encourage the relationship and move the thing forward without crushing your confidence? Because I think that's I think that's the worst thing you can do. And we see we see people married all the time that you can tell which spouse has no confidence in the whole thing. You can tell mm -hmm. that they've been crushed. Yeah. They ain't been hit, but they've been beat down. And never hit anybody. But don't beat them down either. Don't beat them down the with words their words. Can crush someone. They beat them down. And then and then you, and then what you don't get is what you say you want out of them because they're then they're not able to cuz they're shut down. And won't and and can't re, and get put themselves in a position where they can't respond. They they can't pull themselves up by their bootstraps because you cut their bootstraps off, and told them that that won't it won't work anyway. Because every because they say things like, like she said, every time I want to talk about this, every time. Now what we know is that they've been going through this for years, mm -hmm. so it apparently hadn't been every. It time. hadn't been every time. <laughs> every time it because hadn't been every he's time. Tried. Because the house was a wreck. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it had been every time. It's so just like you've been taught by you know in other other venues. Try to avoid phrases like "you always," every time, because those aren't true. Mm -hmm. So again, be really, really cautious about how you speak to your spouse. Always be affirming. Um, you can still be truthful, but always be affirming, and always be. Um, and I'm gonna say, I don't want to say because you can't always be complimentary about things that aren't to be complimented. That aren't good. Um, but you can also understand that there is a person on the other end of your words. There's a and human they being. They have emotions and feelings. And they have a right to be safe. And they have a, yes. and they have a right to be safe from your harshness and from how how badly what what a bad day you're having or what a bad I don't know existence you're having. So be, or history that you have. Yes. So be very, very careful about how you speak to your I mean how you speak to your spouse. It is so, so important. And especially like I said, like we said, you know, initially in front of your children because that's how they learn to do it. That's how they learn to do it. So if they don't want to do it right from you, then you, you'll get what we often call in the church a generational curse. And sometimes it's not a generational curse. It's just how they know how to do things. Yeah, it's what they were learned. What they, they were taught. Were taught and, and learned you taught and them taught. That. Mm -hmm. And it, it keeps going on and on. Because they do it and then their kids see it and which means your grandkids see it and then they, and then your great grand grandkids see it and on and on and on and, and, it, and it doesn't stop. And so people never get to the level of relationships that you need to be truly successful. So if, so if it's happened to you, I grew up in a horrifically, and, and, I, and, and, and one of the, the videos that we, that we did last year, I did last, last year, first mm -hmm. year, uh, was about my childhood. And so I saw the, the worst it could possibly be in front of me. And I had to, for a long time, I had to make sure that that's not what I did. I didn't follow that example. And it shouldn't be that bad. I, I, I thought about myself, it's going to stop with me. And that isn't always easy because you don't always know what else to do. <laughs> you don't always know. Because you, if you don't you never consciously saw it. think about what you're saying and what you're doing. And I did the same thing. I mean, because... There were times my my father was uh, verbally, he would, you know, say things and do things. And uh, this was before he was a changed man. He was, my father had a change in his life and he was saved and he turned around. And praise God, I, I ended up being in a nice home. But there are things that you can so say. I, and when I met, I met her dad. He was. He was awesome. <laughs> He was just awesome. Yes. So, um, the power of prayer. My mom was a, uh, a prayer warrior. And that that changed a lot of things in their marriage. And they were 
they were really not always perfect. And that's the same with us. That's why you can't give up when things are not looking, when it's grim and when you your relationship is going so horrible, you think. You can't give up. You got to fight. Fight for your marriage. Fight for your relationships. You know, learn how you can do better. Learn what you can. You may not have got it from your parents, but you can get it from somewhere. Yeah, that's very true. That is very, very true. You may not, you may not have that example um, to draw back from, uh, but you can seek it out now. You can seek it out. Um, if there's something, if you know that there's something that's not quite right, seek it out. Talk about it. Talk. Be okay with talking about it. Be okay with saying, saying, saying to yourself, "What changes do I, man or woman?" What changes do I have to make to make this better? But, and, and a lot of times if you're looking at your spouse and you're thinking, well, if, if she would do this and if he would do that, then things would be much better. And if he would do this, well, what about what are you That's doing? That's a fail strategy. Um, what are you doing? The only person that you can control is yourself. Yourself. So if you change your mindset and the way you look at it. And what you are doing, it might just change the be, whole situation. Be the change that you want to see. Write that down. Bob, write that down. Be the change that you want to see. And this is this is the key to all of this. If you if there's something in a relationship that you you want to see in a relationship, then you've got to be that. And you can't say they've got shh. She got to do this right him, or I ain't going to be happy until she do that right now. First of all, that's selfish, childish, and stupid, um, so that won't work. Selfish, childish, and stupid never works long term, ever. Uh, so you, you, you got to do some introspection and go, what, what, what do I have to do different? What am I contributing? How can I do this differently to make the outcome of all this different? And that's the key. Yeah, we got to get out of here and make room yes. for somebody else. We are we're later. we are up we're against later. it. We started late. Um, again, thanks everybody for coming on um, today, and especially you guys. Even know why that's funny, but that's okay, and I ain't gonna tell you. Um, but um, thanks for coming on. Do me a favor, share this Facebook live. If you guys would do that on Facebook, if you guys would share this Facebook live in in you know what inappropriate groups, or if you would share it with people who who are in your lives that may be going through something. Yes. Um, and you might not know exactly what to say, but we've touched you in some way. Um, if you would share it with your friends, that would be great. And if you have questions for us, please write please them in the comments under, underneath. Put in the comment, or go to Messenger and message us or email us. Our Facebook pages have our email addresses and stuff. And, and um, I'm not very happy with Messenger right now, <laughs> but uh, but I use it. Don't, don't send me. If, don't send any if you send me a chain a, 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 a chain thing on Messenger, what you will know is that I am a dead letter office. It's going to end right Same there. Same here. I'm not I gonna, don't like. I, I am not going. To, I'm not going to send them on. You send it to me, and that and that's the that it stops. Right it stops there. with me because I'm not sending it to anybody. That's how it is. Um, but if indeed this video has um, this live has touched you in some way. And encourage you in some way. Please share that with other folks. We really appreciate that. Um, if you are, if you, if you're not watching on YouTube yet, hashtag y'all missed it because Saturday we did a mukbang. And if you don't know what that is, that means you have to go to our YouTube channel. If you just go to Deborah, Law search for Deborah Lawson, or search for Real Talk with Deb and Will on um, on YouTube, you'll find it. Uh, please subscribe if, if, on YouTube if you if you guys like what we're doing. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, we appreciate you. So we got to get out of here because you, know, yes. you got stuff to do. Um, we so, have a life. Life. A life outside this room. Anyway, until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody. And for goodness sakes, and I mean this from the bottom of, uh, uh, of my all-repaired little heart, y'all take care of yourself. We'll see love you when we you. see you. Peace. Peace.